that's it. Um, each time we do it, we output the number of time steps and the runtime. So that's the end of the program. It now remains to look at the various functions uh, within the program. So the first one, f initial h, um, this gives us the initial water depths over the domain. You can define this in any way you want. What I've done here is I've divided up the domain into four intervals and I've calculated over these four. Um, what I've done is uh, h is the water depth, um, z is the bed level above the horizontal datum and eta is the water level above the datum so h equals eta minus z and what I've done is I've um, defined eta over uh, four intervals so x1 to x2, x2 to x3 etc and uh, from that I can define the water depth over those intervals so I start off, I take the um, array of computational grid points, the length gives me the number of points I'm talking about, I define a 1D array for the water depth, notice it goes from uh, to n plus 2 because I'm, I've got the left and right ghost values, and then I simply um, calculate marker points to define the various uh, water depths, so um, x1 is the first computational grid point x brackets 1, x2 is some fraction of the last one so is x3 and x4 is the last um, grid point and in these intervals I then define eta that's the water level above the horizontal datum. In this case um, eta1 is 20 that's over the interval x1 to x2 and the rest is 0 so this is just a dam break problem then I go ahead and I calculate the the water depths. Notice here the water depths um, are calculated from eta minus z but because eta and z include ghost points I do it this way. So I'm actually going over the 1D array x that goes from 1 to n so depending on where xi is I've got this but notice the index has gone up by 1 because <clears throat> I've included left and right ghost points so it should be self-explanatory. Um, <coughs> it is possible that you could end up with a negative water depth so if that was the case then I simply say if it's negative call it zero and that ends that function. I also want to input the bed profile so I do that in a, a fairly similar way um, in this case I'm using a Gaussian hump for the bed it's basically the bed is zero over most of the domain but um, be between um, a couple of values um, x1 to x3 it's got a Gaussian shape uh, centered on um, actually centered on x3 <coughs> so between x1 and x2 it, uh, it's a Gaussian and then x3 um, is the center of that and it's given by this Gaussian function now that only gives me um, an array going from 1 to n so I have to introduce left and right hand values for the ghost values here. And then having done that I can calculate the um, derivative <coughs> the bed slope in the usual way using um, a central difference here um, and I can calculate velocities well the velocities are just zero everywhere all the time initial velocities so nothing to do there and then I can fill the u um, array um, notice here I'm using um, whole array operations so the dot star is u, uh, h and v have all got uh, n plus 2 columns this will work. Um, I can fill the f array in much the same way if you compare these formulae with the, the formula for f at the top of the, uh, the file and if necessary I can fill the s source term array as well in much the same way. I calculate dt by a function. This basically um, calculates the maximum velocity um, in each direction um, and then that's the maximum wave speed and then um, using the usual kind of heuristic approach gives us dt. Um, I need to um, fill the h and v arrays from u so um, basically 
I use this approach. Um, you can check this is correct. One thing I should mention here is I'm using um, a dry threshold. Um, a dry threshold is used where if the water height is less than the dry threshold, you can um, call the velocity zero. This avoids any division by zero, as you'll see. Having done that, um, I can call up an output routine to plot the various quantities. Uh, and finally, I've got um, a routine, a function to calculate the boundary conditions. Um, basically, if the flag is set to one, I've got solid boundaries, which means that H1 is H2, but V1 is minus V3. Um, and if the flag is uh, zero, then you just set them to be the same. This has been covered in the notes. So I think that's about all. Uh, at this point, I will run the program and we can see what happens. So if we run the program, we'll see it ticks away nicely. Uh, and if I go to the actual graphs, we can see the initial conditions here, column of water collapsing. The water is heading towards the Gaussian bump on the bed. And you'll see it's going to overtop that. And it looks quite realistic. And the water is going towards the solid right-hand boundary, so it should hit that and reflect back and continue to rise, which is right. And we've also got the velocity profile, which is not so obvious what that should be. And I think at that point I'll stop.